So when I was doing my book, I knew that it was going to come out all over the world, but most of all, I wanted it to be accepted in the maximum city. I knew that uh, it would really uh, be accepted if people, uh, if I saw it in pirated editions on the, on the footpaths of the city. Because uh, that's how most people I know buy their books. They don't go into crossword, but they buy a pirated edition on, on the footpaths. Anyway, I was at a taxi a few years after the book came out, and we were waiting at a, uh, a traffic light, and this kid comes up with a stack of books and uh, Mine's on top, and he was saying, Chalo, Lelo, Maximum Fiddy, Maximum Fiddy. Um, and he said, Ye kitab me kya hai? Fab, Ye kitab me pura Bombay hai. He said, Aha, Kidne ka? He said, Chefo rupia. He said, Chefo rupia, Dere ko malu me, Ye kitab me ne likhi hai. And he says, Thik hai, Agar aap ne likhi to, Aap chaar su me le lejiye. And, you know, I phoned up my publisher, And I said, Fire your sales staff, And hire kids like these, Because they bring the bookshop to the reader. When I started the book, I had no idea what I was going to do. I just needed to go home. I grew up in Bombay at the age of 14. I left for New York and I just wanted to come home. And this was my way to come home, to write a book. I had no idea what I was doing, whether it would be a political book or a travelogue or a memoir. I went out every day and collected stories. And you know, I say in the book, it's not the definitive Bombay book. No book can be the definitive Bombay book. The, each person has his or her own Bombay. This is mine. It's a very, very personal book for me. It was an account of my homecoming. And the way I found my home again was by this incredible act of generosity of all these people in the city, from policemen to hitmen, from bar dancers to Bollywood actresses, from politicians to runaway poets, all of them sharing their stories with me. You know, and that's, I found my home in the city again through storytelling. And a funny thing happened at the end of the book. I, after two and a half years of living here, of you know, sometimes hating it passionately, uh, then falling in love all over again and uh, rediscovering the city, I found my home and then I had the confidence to go abroad again, to go back to New York. And now I've been writing a book about New York, my other home. Uh, but that's the great thing that the book accomplished for me, that I was able to come home um, and go out again with confidence into the world. I think it was, it was tough writing about Bollywood and I have a whole chapter about Bollywood. And you know, it's lots and lots of people want to write about Bollywood, right? You can always sell a Bollywood story anywhere. Uh, and I didn't want to just be one of these people who came in and, you know, interviewed Shah Rukh Khan for half an hour where he tells a few jokes and you... I, I wanted something much more where I wasn't actually interviewing people. So I became a part of the Bollywood machine. I co-wrote some not very good Bollywood films. Uh, actually took the, some of the Bollywood directors who were doing gangster films to the gangster areas. So the, these hitmen of the D company and the Rajan company, you know, they based their, their lifestyles, how they walked, how they dressed on movies like Satya, you know, the gangster films that they saw. And the filmmakers in turn were obsessed, certainly at the time by the the gang war between Dawood Ibrahim and Chota Rajan and but they couldn't really connect and since I knew people in both worlds I brought one to the other um, so I remember we were in um, uh, Madanpura this pretty hardcore area near Nagpada once and I brought a Bollywood film crew who were shooting a gangster film uh, to that area and the real gangsters provided security for the film and when the real gangsters were these scrawny kids who basically could shoot people and melt into the crowd without anyone noticing, when they saw the Bollywood gangsters who were supposed to play them, these guys with red bandanas and big biceps, they just burst out laughing. You know? um, so it was, that, that was tough initially, getting into Bollywood, but once I made myself useful to them, then they completely opened up. And uh, I think I was able to get inside uh, or, or behind the curtain uh, and really find out about these people like as real people. But I must say I was starstruck when Amitabh Bachchan invited me to his bungalow and at four in the morning we were discussing story plots and conspiracy theorists and Shah Rukh Khan made tea for me and I thought, man, this is living. 
I really love the V.S. Naipaul book, India, A Million Mutinies, um, and he's got these long sections set in Bombay. He interviews this Shibsena activist. There's a whole kind of oral history of a political secretary. There's a, a, a film screenwriter, and he really lets these people talk, you know, for themselves. And that's the third part of his whole India non-fiction art from uh, a wounded civilization to an area of darkness and then million mutinies. And it was kind of his reconciling of his Indianness. Um, and, uh, and it's a really terrific uh, Bombay book. And of course, Midnight's Children, which has made me want to be a writer. Um, and I, I realized that I could write about my Bombay in that same chutneyfied language of the Bombay streets. And now I'm fortunate to count Salman Rushdie as one of my best friends in New York. In fact, we teach on the same floor at NYU. So um, this is uh, the good part about being a writer. There's lots of not good parts, but the good part is you actually get to meet your heroes and become friends with them. Mm -hmm.